Okay, in this lesson for our Corne Project class, I would like to invite you to notice how Genesis 1-1 makes Moroni's Mormonism a most moronic thing. And we will, uh, I'll go ahead and begin the lesson by writing it out and then just be talking uh, a little bit about the assertion that as man is, God once was, as God is, man may become. I think that was back in 1852, and we'll show the absurdity if a person had known this text, just because this text speaks of the God of the Bible, not the um, very different God of Mormonism. So here's Bereth Sheath. So we're using our language. We're trying to do our homework. So this is in, and this is beginning. And then we'll notice uh, what God says himself about creation, bara, bara, and he created. And when we see all of it, we'll even study the word that was used by the angel to see if that can help uh, shed light on it. In beginning, God, yeah, he created. Now we have Elohim now. Here's where we get to the word God. El. Hello, hello, him. There we go. There we go. Elohim. Yeah. So this is translated God. And it's plural, but it's granted God. That's the Godhead. And then we have eighth. This is sign of the direct object when the object is definite. Eighth. So let's go to our definite object. We have the heavens. So here's our definite article. Ha. So this is the. Ha Shame Yim Ha Shame Yim, so the heavens. That's plural as well as Elohim. Then we have the conjunction and the sign of the direct object when the object's definite. And Haaretz. So here we go. Haaretz. Ritz. There we go. I think there's a little mark there. So it says, in beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now I'll call your attention to Isaiah 48, 3, this term. Pithom, yeah, Pithom, kind of have to word it out. Pithom, when you look that up, it means, it's an adverb, instantly. And it's where God was commenting on his manner and way of creating instantly, no passage of time and no loss of energy. He's immutable, never changes. Now, man is finite, fallen, sinful. And when the assertion was made in 1852 by some very, a dark-minded, hard-hearted, and person void of the Spirit of Christ, nothing to do with the Spirit of the truth, nothing to do with any knowledge of the true and living God. He had to reject that which is um, his glory, which is revealed in the heavens, and that the understanding by the creation that we can now clearly understand uh, the invisible things of God, namely his eternal power and Godhead, all that was avoided, and instantaneity would be far beyond anything he could handle, uh, God being omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient, and that was even chided, and you can go back and find why they have to scale back the Trinity to try to match it, make it match the absurdity. But at no time was the God of the Bible ever finite, fallen, mutable, and sinful. So that absurdity, it just keeps breaking down. There's really no rescue from it. So let's go and look at this word, G3474, check that out. But it's Moros, and then there was an angel supposedly uh, who said, I am Moroni. Oh, that's great. It just worked out real well. M O R O, see that right there. Now, with just a little work of her language, you can see, bring the M over here. I'm a moron. A moron. And this word refers to dull. Or stupid. So if 
there was any veracity in this name, it would be correct in that it reflects a dullness or a stupefied perspective of the God of the Bible and knowing that creation, even our knowledge of the universe in which we find ourselves today, it is uh, with uh, good math and good information that the universe we're in now is just one billionth of the original universe. This original creation was, again, done instantly according to God's own description of his manner of creation. So the scope and scale of the God of the Bible is so far-reaching and unsearchable as we continue to search out and study and our knowledge of God continues to grow and grow and grow and expand as our capacity to understand fully as revealed in the scriptures as we notice in creation, then the absurdity of some angel. I was even corrected once as a youngster when I was talking with others about Mormonism. It was once more of an energized topic in my area. And I made the mistake of saying that this man, Joseph Smith, talked to a lizard. And someone said, no, it was a salamander. So again, you can hear that in all of the banter and the absurdities of this comment. So this is how Genesis 1-1 demonstrates how Moroni's Mormonism um, is actually a very moronic thing. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.